Here we are on intermission. In Minneapolis, Minnesota at the moment, Hal Galper is taking a break, and he was just featured with his trio, the one that is appearing at Williams Pub, Todd Kuhlman bass, Steve Ellington drums, Hal Galper piano, and that uh, extended performance on, I'll remember, April. And I've managed to uh, put in a call to Williams Pub, and I'd like you to meet uh, Hal Galper. Hal, welcome to Minnesota Public Radio and the network here. Blay, it's a pleasure to uh, talk to you again. Well, it's good to see you because I haven't heard you since that um, one-night stand or weekend at uh, the Artist Quarter in Minneapolis. That was four nights, right. A couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes. Good to have you back in this area, and it's rather timely because this session that you cut at uh, Clinton Recording Studios in New York uh, is just as intimate as can be, and we're glad to sit in with you by remote control. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'd like to uh, just touch on a couple of things. Um, there's a great uh, and wonderful history for the Herb Pomeroy Band in Boston. You were a part of that. Yes, I was for quite a while. That, that was uh, one of the local regional bands that uh, spawned so many great players like yourself. Um, at what period were you in that band? I was in there in the... Uh, uh, let me see. I probably... Uh, the uh, early 60s for a while... Uh, late, yeah, early 60s, and then mid-60s for a while. I went with Chet, and then I came back to Boston, and I played with uh, Herb's band. Uh, that was quite a band. It was, a, it was uh, you know, he had available to him all the best arrangers who were studying at Berkeley. So uh, we had an incredible uh, book. It was probably the hardest band book in the country. Uh, very challenging because all these young writers were, you know, stretching their wings and trying and experimenting with this and that. So it was a very original uh, band to play with. And then you spent some time with uh, the legend uh, Chet Baker. Yes, I did. How long did you tour with him? Well, I was with him about two and a half years. The first time, uh, we played together many times over the years, off and on, but that was the longest and the first time. That was my first time uh, on the road with a, a big name uh, uh, jazz artist uh, traveling and recording, and uh, it was quite an experience, quite an educational experience. I learned a lot from Chet Baker. Even though he didn't know note one of music, he taught me a lot about music. What was uh, just an example or two of what... Uh, uh, drama, especially, and how to swing hard and play soft, which is uh, a, a, a rare event these days. Uh, it's uh -huh. becoming a lost art. And he was the master of soft, uh, uh, especially, and also drama and dynamics and, uh, and control. He was very much into controlling the music and, and directing it. Uh, so that it uh, was uh, communicable to the people. Anything else you uh, can comment uh, and uh, pass on as observation of Chet Baker? Chet Baker? <laughs> that I could mention over the telephone? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and on the air, uh, over 14 stations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, censored. <laughs> yeah, well, he was quite a taskmaster. He was one of the great old fascist band leaders. Uh, he was a fascist. <laughs> of course. The, the best band leaders were, because they made you uh, play. They, they said, play this way or, or else, although the guy behind you had the job. And so you learned how to play all kinds of ways, and they really, you know, you, fi you figure the reality of the situation is here's a guy who has to deal with four other egomaniacal, undisciplined, musicians and you really have to be able to get control of your band so by necessity the best band leader was a fascist who could get control of all these you know giant egos that his sidemen had you know so that was part of the logistics of having a band in those days it's not quite the same these days and also these guys gave you discipline that you wouldn't have gotten any other place i can uh, most of the best band leaders that i play with were that way cannonball was not that way and phil was not that way uh, but almost everybody else was, and I, I respect that tremendously. I have no uh, negative feelings about that. They, you know, you were young and unformed and undisciplined, and they shaped you. They made you learn different ways to play. With Cannonball Adderley, uh, the contrasting kind of leadership, how would you describe that? Cannonball never said anything once about the music. He just let you play. And you were working an electric keyboard at that time, weren't you? <laughs> yes, for almost three years again. And then at the end was of that, that a sentence? Uh, uh, huh? Was that a musical sentence to jail, working the electric keyboard? Not in the beginning, but towards the end, I was I, I was totally disgusted with it. And uh, when I left the band, I took my Fender Rhodes and 
rolled it down to the Hudson River and threw it off the pier and watched it sink. And I haven't touched an electronic instrument since. That's a serious story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to make some kind of commitment, you know, personal commitment to it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I enjoyed it tremendously. I watched the bubbles come up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. I found my piano. Oh, good. Well, listen, that's just a marvelous story. And Hal Galper, I hope your um, last set at Williams Pub in Minneapolis, Minnesota, at Lake and Hennepin is a full of um, joyous listeners and I know it's full of your dynamics and at your request we uh, we're going to vicariously move to Williams pub and listen to you play the lamp is low some of us are going to stay right here some of our listeners are uh, you know behind the wheel of cars uh -huh. and uh, some of them are uh, just waiting to drop a line into a lake because of the fishing <laughs> opener in the state of Minnesota oh, I see so uh, uh, we're vicariously enjoying Hal Galper, Todd Kuhlman, and Steve Ellington. Thanks for touching base again. And A pleasure to talk with you, Lay. Thank you, Hal. All right, and all, and all you who are driving, please drive carefully. Yes, indeed. All right, Lay. Good night. Talk to you the next time. Yes, indeed. Bye. Bye. I've been talking with Hal Galper, and his new project is called Invitation to a Concert. And, in fact, he's going on stand right now, and will probably be playing this in the next set. Mm -hmm.